In this video, I want to discuss heteronuclear diatomics. So every example that we've looked at thus far has been an example of a homonuclear diatomic. So things like H2, N2, B2, O2, right? There's this, the exact same atom is involved both times, right? So you have a bond between two of the same atom. What happens when you have a bond between two different atoms, right? A heteronuclear diatomic. Well, let's look and see at an example what, what happens when we deal with the heteronuclear diatomic. So this uh, MO diagram is unfinished. We're going to fill it in, but um, let's consider uh, the NO molecule, nitric acid, right? So if we're looking at NO, um, the basics of the molecular orbital diagram are going to kind of remain, unchang remain unchanged, right? On the left-hand side, I'll put one of the atoms. So here we have the nitrogen atom. We got 2s and 2p orbitals involved on that side. And then on the right-hand side, I put the oxygen atom. We got, um, you know, the 2s, the oxygen 2s, and the oxygen 2p on, uh, on the right-hand side. So, so we know that the 2s orbitals are going to split in this fashion where we get a, a, you know, sigma star 2s and a sigma 2s bonding orbital. And we know that the antibonding orbitals for the 2p are going to split in this fashion. What we don't know is what's going to be the order of the pi 2p bonding and the sigma 2p bonding orbitals, right? Uh, in the last video, we talked about a phenomenon known as sp mixing. Right. And I told you that this SP mixing was significant enough to raise the energy of the sigma 2P in the case of N2, but not in the case of O2. So then what do we do here? Right. Well, what you do is if you have a atom in the heteronuclear diatomic that's involved in that molecule that does have significant SP mixing on its own as a homonuclear diatomic, then you follow that ordering. So this would have, NO would have the same energy ordering as N2. So we'll have the same energy ordering as N2. So what that means is that we're going to have the pi 2P lower in energy than the sigma 2P. And then draw in our sigma 2p here, right? So this would be the same energy ordering that you would get with, um, with N2. And that's what we're going to use for NO. So for any heteronuclear diatomic where one of the atoms that does have significant um, sp mixing, so boron, nitrogen, carbon, or, or any other atom that's in the same column as these atoms, those would have significant SP mixing even when they're involved in heteronuclear diatomics as a general rule of thumb. Okay, so let's put in our electrons. So for nitrogen, we're gonna have five valence electrons. So we got the two in the 2s, and we got the three in the 2p. For oxygen, we got six valence electrons. So we got the two in the 2s, we got one, two, three, four in the 2P, right? So that's going to be obviously the other difference between um, this, the, these diagrams for heteronuclear diatomics is that you'll have an uneven amount of electrons on both sides, right? So you've got, uh, so you've got five electrons here and you got six electrons here. So that's going to give us a total of 11 electrons to fill in here. So let's put them in. So we can double there, that's two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Wait, two, four, six, eight, ten, <laughs> and there's eleven. Okay, that's how you do math. Okay, so um, okay, so this gives us all eleven of our electrons in NO. So you can see that they're distributed in the exact same way. Since MO theory doesn't depend on these localized models, you know, we just take the eleven electrons that we got and we just fill them in. So this is actually a pretty important development. Uh, we kind of already have seen an odd number of electrons, but remember, think back to the Lewis dot model. It struggles with odd numbers of electrons. You got to put that weird single dot 
over an atom, right? Uh, with MO theory, it doesn't matter. It can have a um, even number of electrons, odd number of electrons. All of it is treated the same and distributed amongst the molecular orbitals, right? So, so this really is a powerful, very general model for um, for molecular bonding. Okay, so um, so let's look at an example. Let's look at an example problem. So I want to look at three different molecules here. I want to look at CO. I want to look at CO plus, and I want to look at CO two plus. And what I want to do for these diatomic molecules and ions is I want to determine which one has the uh, the strongest bond. So which one has a stronger bond? So which has strongest bond, right? So in order to do this, we're gonna have to build the molecular orbital diagram for all three of these guys and then calculate a bond order for each one. So as far as the molecular orbital diagram, I'm going to simplify this just a little bit, right? So I'm just gonna draw the lines for the MOs instead of drawing the full molecular orbital diagrams. So first let's do CO. Right, so for CO, we know that the lowest energy uh, molecular orbital is going to be a sigma 2s. And above that, we'll have a sigma star 2s. Right, now as far as the ordering of the pi 2p and the sigma 2p, right, um, since carbon is one of the atoms that would have significant sp mixing. CO is going to have the same ordering as C2, which would have the pi 2p lower in energy. So we're going to have our pi 2p here. And then we'll have our sigma 2p. And right next, we're going to have the pi star 2p. And then the sigma 2p up top. Sigma star 2p up top. Okay. So, um, so for CO, we have 10 valence electrons. So CO is going to have 10 valence electrons. So now all we have to do is just distribute those valence electrons. Now that we have the general pattern, right? So we're going to have two here, two here, two here, and two here, right? So two, four, six, eight, ten. 10, that gives us all 10 of our valence electrons for CO. So now we want to calculate a bond order. So our bond order, keep in mind, is the number of bonding electrons minus the antibonding divided by two. So as far as bonding electrons, we have quite a few. We got two here in the sigma 2s. We got four here in the pi 2p and two here in the sigma 2p. So that's going to give us eight in total. And as far as antibonding electrons, we only have these two that are in the sigma star 2s. So that's going to be minus two there over three. So the bond order for this guy, eight minus two is six divided by, whoops, two <laughs> is three. Right. So that gives us a bond order of three for CO. OK, so let's go on to CO plus. We know that this guy's gonna have one less electron, so it's gonna have nine valence. Now, even though it has a charge, it's going to have the exact same molecular orbital configuration as CO. So we can actually fill in the exact same molecular orbital ordering here. So sigma 2s, sigma star 2s, pi 2p, sigma 2p, pi star 2p and sigma 2p, sigma star 2p. Okay, cool. So we end up with nine valence electrons to distribute. So boom, 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 boom. And then we have a single uh, electron in the sigma 2p, right? So calculating the bond order in this case, right? We're gonna have seven bonding electrons since we've taken one from the sigma 2p. Minus, we still only have two in the uh, sigma star uh, 2s antibonding. So that's minus two over two. So the bond order is going to be equal to 2.5 because you end up with seven minus two equals five. So that's five over two. 
which gives us 2.5, right? So this bond is actually weaker than CO, right? And the reason is because we took an electron out of a bonding orbital. So those electrons that are in the antibonding orbital carry a little bit more weight now that we've taken an electron out of the bonding orbital, right? So, um, so last one up is CO2 plus. Obviously, this guy is going to have eight valence electrons. And so the uh, ordering here is exactly the same. So sigma 2s, sigma star 2s, pi 2p, sigma 2p, pi star 2p, and sigma star 2p. Right. So filling in our electrons, we got two here, two here, two here, and two here. So that gives us eight total electrons there. Calculating the bond order for this guy, we got six electrons in bonding orbitals now, two, three, I mean, two, four, six, over our two that remain in the antibonding 2s. So now that gives us a bond order of two because six minus two is four, four divided by two is two. So that gives us the bond order of two. So if we're ranking these in order of decreasing bond strength, right? The bond strength basically goes down as we start to take electrons away. So this is gonna be decreasing bond strength. Right. And the reason is because we're taking the electrons that are being taken away are taken out of bonding molecular orbitals. So since we're taking electrons away from bonding orbitals, that's going to actually weaken the bond strength for CO. So we go from a bond order of three down to a bond order of two as we start to take electrons away. OK, so hopefully this gives you uh, some good insight into how to deal with the heteronuclear diatomic case. I know the homonuclear diatomic case typically gets a lot of attention because it's easiest to introduce, but, um, but it's also important to know what's gonna happen in the case of heteronuclear diatomics as well.